Hey everybody, I'm Nathaniel Dodds from tutvid.com and today we're going to talk about a little bit of Photoshop, specifically a request that I got on Twitter. That's right. Send me a DM on Instagram at tutvid uh, or hit me up on Twitter also at tutvid. If you have a tutorial suggestion or idea, something you would like to see, I have a long list of tutorial ideas, but if your idea is really great, it'll eventually make it into the tutorial form. I got this request and I just thought it looked really cool and of course I wanted to do a tutorial on it. Uh, and here are a couple examples of effects that I went ahead and sorted out and created. So you can see the effect really works with all kinds of images, landmark images and even portraits of people we're going to learn how to create it today. If you want to use any of the stock photos in any of those five examples I just showed, there'll be a link down in the bio. Also down somewhere around the bio is the subscribe button. If you want to see more Photoshop tutorials, make sure you subscribe to this channel. You will not regret it. I can't emphasize that enough. It's, well, I think you'll like it. I'll put it to you that way. And also consider supporting the channel by picking up a copy of my Photoshop course. A little eye icon will appear up there in the corner. You click on that. You can buy a copy of my Photoshop course all about how to retouch images in Photoshop. There's also a link right down there in the bio. I think you'll like that as well. And if you pick up a copy of it, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Let's jump into this tutorial and check it out. So here we are in Photoshop. We're going to go with the Neuschwanstein Castle in Germany. This is the effect we're going to create, uh, but you saw there in the intro, we had all those different uh, effects that we created, and they're all done basically the same way. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go File. We're going to go File, New. There we go. And we're going to go with a 2,000 pixel by 2,000 pixel document, resolution of 72, uh, and everything else can just kind of remain the same. We're going to hit Create here, and the first thing I want to do is change the background color. So I'm going to come over here to my foreground color, which is now black, double click on that, and I'm going to enter a hexadecimal code here. And that hexadecimal code is F1, F1, F1. It's a very, very, very light gray. Hit OK. And then we want to fill this layer with that foreground color by hitting Option Delete on the Mac. That's Alt Backspace on the PC. And now we have our light gray. All right, let's grab the text tool here, and we're going to click once. And I'm going to just paste what I have copied to my clipboard, which is Neuschwanstein Castle. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, I did not major in German, nor do I speak the language. Uh, but this is uh, its just a super sick looking castle over in Germany. Uh, and we're going to create this effect uh, revolving around it. But basically, you want to take your landmark or person or whatever, some defining quality of the image and put place it as the name and then maybe the location or just something else you think is important to the image on the line beneath it. Great. Now, this text can be any color. I went with Novacento uh, Sans with the book weight uh, at 48 points is a great size. Again, the color doesn't matter. And I also just chose to make it all caps just to make sure that they were all capital letters. I'm also going to create a new layer. I'm going to create a new layer and we're going to name this layer line. All right. Now I'm going to take my a rectangular marquee tool here and I'm actually going to zoom in. I want to make a line about the length or the width, I should say, of my text, right about like that. And now you see how it gives me a width and a height, width of 634 and a height of six. I really want the height to be three. So there we go, three pixels. Commit that so we have that selection. And uh, we want to just fill this with probably black. So I'm going to double click on my foreground color, set it back to black. There we go. Hit OK. And then again, Option Delete, Alt Backspace on the PC, and then go select Deselect. And then I need you to come over here and grab the Move tool. Grab the Move tool, hold down Shift, and drag that line down beneath the text, kind of until it looks right. Right, that looks pretty good. You can use the down arrow key to nudge it down a little bit. Great. Once we have that little piece of text, you can shut off the line layer. You can shut off the text layer. And we're ready to kind of move along here with this effect. We need to go back to the text tool, grab that, and just click once. And I'm going to type the letter G for Germany in this case. You could go with an N for, you know, the name of the castle. But I'm going to stick with G for Germany because it looks cool. And the letter G is just, it's a baller letter. So I'm going to highlight that uh, bit of text. And I'm going to change my font to, I want League Spartan. That's what I'm going with. But really, any sort of, like, fairly bold sans serif font is going to work pretty well for you. I'm just going with League Spartan. It is free. And let's try cranking the size up to, like, a 1,000 uh, points. Let's try that again. Let's go 1,000 points. There we go. You can see nice and large in the middle of our document. We'll, we'll align it in a second. But everything else can remain the same. All caps. Uh, the color black is perfect. I'm going to select my Move tool. I'm actually going to choose Select and Select All. And then with my Move tool active, I can use my alignment features up here to align vertical and horizontal centers. Great. And then just select Deselect. So we got that letter in the middle of our document. Perfect. We're ready to drag the image in. So over here, I have this o2-castle.jpg. That is the castle. I'm going to drag it in place here. And before we do anything, I want to just reduce the opacity. Over here in the Layers panel, I can reduce the opacity before I commit the change or anything. I'm just doing this so I can kind of see where the castle is going to sit here in the effect. Maybe I'll push this over just a little bit so maybe that 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 turret of the castle kind of comes up in between the G. That'll look cool. And mainly, you just want to make sure that like 
best case scenario, some color out there, in this case the color of the sky, will fill the majority of the, let uh, the letter, and we just kind of have the foreground details happening here in the foreground. So that's all great. Now I could make this a little bit larger, but you know I think it's going to kind of work the way it is. Maybe I'll bump it just a little bit larger. But I don't want to go too crazy. Something like that will be fine. And now we'll commit the change, and we can jack this guy back up to 100% opacity. Now, in order to begin quickly masking this castle into place so we can see the letter and the castle, we're going to command or control click on the letter G to load that as a selection. And what I'm going to do is use the polygonal lasso tool. So I'm going to grab the poly lasso tool right here, hold down shift, and just begin you know, creating a very rough selection kind of around the areas I think I want to save. So I want to bring this all the way over here so we kind of can even see the trees coming up through. And of course, we want this little turret in here. Great, and then hold down Command or Control and just join uh, the ends of the letter together. And now what we'll do is we will hide the G text layer, right? Because we really don't need it for any more than creating a selection. And we're going to go Layer, Layer Mask, and we're going to choose to reveal just the selection. So now we've gotten rid of the bulk of the image. We're starting to see that G shape appear up there, right? That's great. Uh, but we need to really kind of clean this stuff up in here. So I'm going to begin with this bit right in here. And this is really where it helps to have a tablet. We need to show it a little bit of tender love and care. Uh, I'm going to once more command or control click over here on the G and that'll just load it as a selection. But what I need to do is inverse the selection because I really want to be able to paint on my mask. I want to be able to paint black over these bits of the sky uh, so we just show and expose the castle sticking out of the letter and not this chunky sky look we have. So we can just inverse the selection, command, shift, or control, shift, and the letter I. And now what I can do is I can come in a little bit closer. I can take my brush tool, hit the letter B. Uh, you can right click. We want a, a pretty small, even smaller than 25, uh, relatively, uh, well, probably a medium, not, not really hard, not too soft brush. I got 62% on the softness and you want to make sure you're painting with your foreground color set to black. And I can come right in here and just begin painting away the bits of the sky around this little bit of turret down here. You can see there we go. I paint that right away and really just go up and over this entire part of the castle and very, very quickly create a really cool looking effect here for this part of the text. And yeah, when you're happy with the way that looks, you can zoom out. We can deselect Command or Control D and take a look at it. So we've got that first part of the castle. Now we've got to clean up the bottom part, but I think we'll do the top part of the castle first. So we'll basically do the same exact thing here. We will Command or Control click over here on our G layer, inverse that selection, which we can also go select and just choose to inverse like that. And we can come over here and begin just painting away all this stuff that doesn't belong uh, out here by the, you know, all these spires and sides and top of the castle over on this side. It is such a sick looking building, isn't it? Can you imagine building this thing up here on the top of this mountain or hill or whatever? It really, honestly, is something I should learn a little bit more about uh, because this kind of stuff, to me, is just absolutely stinking fascinating. Yeah, and I think that looks pretty cool. So that's the castle part of it. And then we can just figure out what we want to do down here. And this is really completely up to you. You can uh, go as crazy or not down here as you want. I think what I'm going to do is just try to, you know, gently dust away a bit of the white above these trees here and just kind of stagger these in here a little bit. Uh, maybe I'll even soften the brush up a little bit just to give it a little bit more of a forgiving edge. Uh, but it really doesn't have to be anything perfect. I'm going to paint with white to bring the top of that tree back and... Make sure I'm not losing the tops of any other trees in the process. Something like that's cool. And I think what I'm going to do is just kind of soften up my brush. So make my brush a little bit bigger here. I'm using the bracket key. That's the right bracket key to make my brush bigger. Right click. I'll probably soften this down to about 20%. And I'll just paint away over here. And just try to loop that softness in. And just roughly follow like the bottom, you know, the bottom of like the rockiness of this. I don't know. Just something that kind of looks somewhat sort of natural there we go something like that looks cool and then I can just hit command or control D to deselect so now you can see we have the castle in place and the letter G popping out of it now if the background still seems a little bit too bright for your taste we can hit command or control U to bring up hue saturation and darken it a couple ticks if maybe that helps bring out the castle you can see that makes a massive difference right before after makes a pretty big difference I'll go with like negative seven that looks pretty good and by the way I did that back here on the background layer now, what we want to do, we're going to select the, the sort of masked image up here. And what we want to do is, remember, we created that, uh, that little tag titliness that we want to use. Uh, but I still want to hide that. I want to just control a command or control click on both of those layers. So I'm going to command or control click here on the text uh, thumbnail to load that as a selection. And command shift click on the line layer to load that as a selection. We're going to use this as a mask here because we're going to create a solid color layer. Go layer, 
new fill layer and choose solid color and we can name it whatever we want. I'm going to hit OK and it's going to use that selection as a mask, right? The cool thing about this is we automatically, can you see that? Well, you, can you see it there? We have an eyedropper tool. So what I like to do is select like one of these like medium, medium or darker tones in the photo itself and use that as a color for my text. You can see how beautifully now it just has a, a bluish grayish color that you know it just works with the photo, right? I can hit OK and then I can take my move tool and I can drag this wherever my heart desires. Maybe I'll place it right there. And maybe one last thing we'll do here, uh, down beneath the G Castle Masked layer, we're going to create a new layer by hitting the New Layer icon. We're going to name this layer Shadow. And on this layer, we'll go ahead and grab the Elliptical Marquee tool, and we'll drag out just a, you know, I don't know, a really flat oval, something about probably about that big. We'll go ahead and fill it with black, which is our foreground color. So we can just hit Option, Delete, Alt, Backspace on the PC, and then select and choose to deselect. Now I'll go Filter, I'll go Blur, I'll go Gaussian Blur, and let's blur this, yeah, I mean 17, maybe 20, something something right around there, you know, actually maybe a little bit less, maybe like 13. Yeah, that's probably a little better. Hit OK. We can use the Move tool and we can move this around wherever we think necessary. Maybe something like that is cool. And then just reduce the opacity over here until it just looks like it blends well. Something like that, right around 30% opacity or so, just really gives the image a bit of depth. And we can collapse the character panel here. And yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, we can go in, you can create this effect. It's really not that difficult. It's just a matter of figuring out where you want your image or the landmark in your image or the person in your image or whatever part of the focal point of your image to kind of jut out of the letter or lettering that you're creating. Uh, pretty simple effect, but... There's how you do it in Photoshop. So for creating this effect in Photoshop, by the way, if you create this effect, tag me on Instagram, upload it to your Instagram, tag me at tutvid. I would love to see what you guys create. I always love jumping into the comments and liking and the DMs and everything that's involved with Instagram. It's amazing. So make sure you upload it to Instagram and tag me over there um, and I'll check it out for sure. So for creating this landmark letter, double exposure, typography effect in Photoshop, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.